Are you an employer in Canada looking to hire someone as either an employee or a contractor? The distinction between the two is very important because they have different legal and financial implications for your business. In this week's video, we're going to be talking about the differences between the two options and we're going to be discussing the factors that CRA will use to determine whether a worker is a contractor or an employee. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Irene and I'm a CPA here in Canada. I post videos explaining important accounting and tax concepts using simple language to help business owners gain financial clarity. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button for more. First, let's define what it means to be an employee. Generally speaking, if you are working for an employer and they control what you do, how you do it, and when you do it, you're typically going to be considered more of an employee. If this is true, on each of the paychecks that your employer gives you, your employer is going to be responsible for withholding your income tax, your Canada pension plan contributions, CPP, and your employment insurance premiums, EI on each of your paychecks and your employer is going to remit that to the government and the CRA on behalf of the employee. In addition, the employer is also going to be responsible for paying the employer's portion of CPP and EI for that employee. As an employee, you may be titled to certain benefits such as vacation pay, sick pay, and statutory holidays. So on the other hand, if you are self-employed, you work for yourself and you have more control over how you do the work. As the self-employed individual, you are responsible for withholding and remitting your own income taxes, as well as your Canada Pension Plan contribution, the CPP. Please note that when you are self-employed, you are going to be responsible for paying for both the employee portion as well as the employer portion of the CPP contributions. When you are self-employed, you're also not entitled to benefits such as vacation pay or sick leave. There is often a bias towards paying workers as a contractor rather than an employee because it could be seen as a way to save money for the business and it is seen as more simple because it can avoid certain legal and regulatory requirements. So how do you know if you are considered an employee or a self-employed individual? Well, the CRA uses a two-step approach when examining the working relationship. So for step one, according to the CRA, the determination comes down to whether there is a contract of service in place, which represents an employee relationship, or if there is a contract for services in place, which represents a contractor relationship self-employed relationship. Essentially, this means that if you're working under a written or a verbal contract where it states your responsibilities, your payments, and other terms of your working relationship, this can suggest that you're more of an employee. However, if you're providing services to your clients for let's say a specific period of time or for a specific project with or without a contract in place, you're more likely to be considered self-employed. Now, let's take a look at step two in CRA's process of determining working relationships. There are several factors to consider when determining whether if there is a contract of services in place or a contract for services in place. So the first one being control. The question here is who controls what needs to be done, how it needs to be done, and when it needs to be done. So for example, if you work as a cook in a restaurant, the restaurant will dictate your schedule, your working hours, as well as your duties. This typically will mean that you're more an employee. In contrast, if you are a freelance graphic designer that has the ability to control your own schedule as well as determining how you wanna carry out the projects, you're more likely to be self-employed. So another factor is tools and equipment. And the question here is who provides the necessary tools and equipment to carry out the job or the work? So for instance, if you are a construction worker and your employer provides all the necessary tools and equipment to complete the job, then you're more likely to be an employee. Alternatively, if you're a photographer who provides their own camera equipment, lighting equipment, and editing software, you're more likely to be considered a contractor. So another factor is subcontracting work. The question here is, can you 
subcontract out the work to another person. So for example, if you're a software developer who can contract out some of the work on a project to be completed by somebody else, then you're more likely considered a self-employed individual. However, if you are a software developer within a company and you are responsible for doing the task or doing the job, then you're more likely considered an employee. The next factor is financial risk. The question here is, are you financially responsible for the success or the failure of the business or the project? So for example, if you are an event planner who is responsible for the success of the event and you don't have an employer to fall back on, you're likely considered self-employed. However, if you are a salaried event planner who works at an event planning company, you are likely considered an employee because the company itself is responsible for the success or the failure of the event. The next factor is responsibility and management. The question here is, are you responsible for investing in as well as managing the business or the project? So if you're an entrepreneur who has invested your own resources into the business and is responsible for managing it, you're likely considered self-employed. So for example, if you're a freelance who manages all aspects of the writing job, including the marketing, the invoicing, and etc then you're likely considered self-employed. However, if you work as a writer for a publishing company and you don't have any ownership or management responsibilities, then you're more likely considered an employee. So another factor is opportunity for profit. So the question here is, do you have the opportunity to generate a profit or incur a loss on the business or the project. So for example, if you are a graphic designer who takes on projects and secures your own clients and you charge a fee for your services, you have the opportunity to generate a profit. However, if you are a salaried graphic designer who works at a design company, regardless of how many clients you go out to secure or how well you do the job, you're gonna be paid the same amount. That would make you more of an employee. It's really important to note that there is no one factor that is is determinative in deciding whether you are an employee or a contractor. Instead, the CRA will look at all the factors together to determine your employment status. Please note that I will not be covering the concept of personal services business PSBs in this video. Please consult with a CPA if you are unsure. Thank you for making your way until the end of the video. I hope today's video was able to help you bring some clarity between the two options. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button for more. Over here, YouTube thinks you're really gonna like this video, so I'll meet you there.